One question that arises out of Salisbury is whether Britain has been, and you've heard it referred to, been too willing to offer itself up as a comfortable home to very wealthy Russians, often close to President Putin. Don't ask, don't tell seems to have been the policy in regard to the origins of that Russian wealth coming into London. And there's been a discernible reluctance to use that wealth as a diplomatic weapon. It's not just Russians we've been nice to, by the way. Remember the London School of Economics had taken money from Colonel Gaddafi's son safe and given him a PhD. If we are a soft touch, is it because some parts of our establishment are too easily impressed by the riches of foreigners? Well, John Sweeney looks now at one example, the social connections of Russian aluminium magnate Oleg Deripaska. And a warning, this report starts with flashing images. Every summer, the haves and the have yachts converge for very private holidays. In 2008, Russian oligarch Oleg Deripaska sailed to Corfu for one. Lord Mandelson was there. So too was George Osborne. It caused a bit of a do. I didn't break any rules, but I think I did make a mistake. And I think in politics, it's not just what you say or what you do, it's how things look. And you know, I'm absolutely honest, this didn't look very good. They were all guests of financier Nat Rothschild, who owns this villa on the island. What happens in Corfu stays in Corfu. That's the deal. But there was a leak. A newspaper was tipped off that Lord Mandelson had allegedly been, quote, dripping pure poison about Gordon Brown in Osborne's ear. Furious at this indiscretion, Nat Rothschild revealed that Osborne went aboard Oleg Deripaska's yacht with a then Tory fundraiser, Andrew Feldman. Rothschild said they were soliciting a donation, something they deny. Fun fights like those held at Nat Rothschild's villa are moments when British establishment types can get cosy with Russian money. And whether they know it or not, that means they could be just two degrees of separation from the master of the Kremlin himself, Vladimir Putin. Putin demands the loyalty of Russia's billionaires. There are nearly a hundred of them. Deripaska is near the top of the list. He's one of the most important links between Putin and the British establishment. Through George Osborne and Tory fundraiser Andrew Feldman, you could say that Putin was just three degrees of separation from David Cameron. I don't think that there's necessarily espionage and blackmail. I think the question of what kind of friends you have is influenced by um, what you need to understand about the political situation in Russia. And if you understand that oligarchs in Russia today are not independent people, but cannot hold on to their wealth without maintaining good relationships with Putin, then that's something that British politicians need to understand. In the case of Oleg Deripaska, the American authorities have been more wary than the Brits. The US has denied Oleg Deripaska a visa. Mr. Deripaska made his mega fortune in the 1990s after Russia's aluminium wars, so-called because some proprietors were literally killing off the competition. There's no suggestion that Mr. Deripaska was involved in violence. But surviving in that environment was tough. It was very difficult. But I believe whatever I did, I'm, I can't say that I'm proud, but I believe you know, that I did the right thing. Mr Deripaska told the High Court in London in 2012 that he'd been forced to pay protection money to a man with links to organised crime. One of Mr Deripaska's new business associates is former energy minister Greg, now Lord Barker, another David Cameron chum. He's the chair of Deripaska's energy company, N+, which was recently allowed to list on the London Stock Exchange. And this week it was revealed by the Financial Times that N+, is one of the clients of Lord Mandelson's strategic advice consultancy, Global Council. Global Council says neither Lord Mandelson nor Mr Deripaska are involved in this work. Deripaska is big news in Russia at the moment. Opposition politician Alexei Navalny recently released this documentary about him. It includes footage of Deripaska on his yacht, entertaining one of Russia's most senior government officials. 
It was filmed by an escort, 19 years old at the time. In London, a company run by the Home Secretary's brother, Roland Rudd, handled the PR for the recent stock market flotation of Deripaska Business, N+. I mean, I'm not in the PR business, but I think that when one is the immediate family of somebody in a top leadership position, one should be careful about what foreign um, professionals, what foreign clients one has. Donald Trump's campaign manager, Paul Manafort, has worked for Mr. Deripaska too, something Mr. Deripaska is not keen to talk about without an appointment. Uh, get lost, please. Thank you. At Tory fundraiser, the black and white ball, the British wives of oligarchs bid big money for experiences, like having dinner with Gavin Williamson, the defence secretary. It's clear from our research that several wealthy oligarchs close to Vladimir Putin have managed to cultivate members, whether witting or unwitting, of the British ruling elite. Getting involved in the art world, donating money to charities, sponsoring academic prizes, buying shares in football clubs, these are the ways that Putin's cronies can become friends of the posh folk of London. But. If the business is illegal and the stock exchange is happy, should we care? There's a danger here in smearing all Russians. Look, there are lots of very gifted entrepreneurs, artists, rebels in London today. And uh, it would be awful to sort of have a total attack on all Russians in London. Quite, uh, it's wonderful that we have this expatriate Russian community. But political parties should be very careful and government should be very careful about who it does business with and takes money from. People are saying there's a problem with Jeremy Corbyn and Seamus Milne's judgment about Russia. That's the only problem of Russian influence in British politics. True or false? Oh, false. It's got to be said that the Conservative Party has been uh, very rash in some of its, uh, where, who it's taken money from and who it's done business with. And of course, New Labour, which is currently on the warpath against Jeremy Corbyn, has all kinds of questions to ask. But Russian money is washed around the corridors of power in London for perhaps too long. The question is, will the nerve agent poisonings in Salisbury change anything? Or will it continue to be rubles as usual? <laughs>